So today, Dr. Dolly today is going to be with our one and only Madam Rosalind. Uh, Madam Rosalind is right in the studio this afternoon and Madam Rosalind is going to be taking us together with Dr. Dolly through the topic fertility and definitely they are going to do justice to that. So please invite everyone, everyone that you have sent the link to, tell them that the show is live. We are live. And just to mention as well that we're streaming on YouTube. We're streaming on YouTube as well, just in case you have people who want to join us on YouTube. The link is also there, and the link will come up also on the chat section shortly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so excited that you can join us. And you can ask all your questions because this show today, as always, is interactive. So you can send in your questions using the Q&A button on some devices, it's just on the top. And on most devices, it's just beneath as well. So you can put in your comments, you can ask your questions, and I will be right here. I will be right here to take all your questions for you. Thank you so much. And if you are watching on YouTube, don't forget that you also could click. Please kindly do click on the subscribe button so that you can actually join our group, our channel. And also, you could send out your the links directly to your friends on your WhatsApp channels. And also, don't forget to click on the notification bell just on the side so, so that you can get us once we're live. Thank you so much. We're going to have live pictures coming through shortly. I just want to say that um, we are excited that you are right here with us. We're excited that you're right here with us. So thank you again for coming on the show. Uh, we're going to get live pictures coming through shortly from the studio. Welcome. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, now we have live pictures coming through. Hello, 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 hello. How are we Hi, doing? Hi, Mabu. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam Rosalind. How are you doing today? Good to see you in the studio. Yes. Okay. okay. Oh, what do you like now? The studio is Can you hear me clearly? We can hear you, but you're breaking. Okay. Uh, okay, so good afternoon, Marvel. Good afternoon, everyone. This is your favorite show once again, The Billion Dollar Body, and I am your anchor, Dr. Dolly Mokage. And with me here is Mrs. Rosaline Amaju Arau. Okay, so today is a very special topic. We're doing causes and treatments of infertility in women. Tomorrow, we're going to do causes and treatments of infertility in men. So what is infertility? Let's start from there. Infertility, like we know it, is a common problem in our society. Everyone, if, you're, if you don't have it, you thank God, we thank God for you, but you have, you have relatives, friends, co-workers who have been married for quite a while and who doesn't have children. So how, how do we define infertility? Is it everybody that has just married and you don't get pregnant tomorrow, you're termed infertile? No. Now, infertility is defined as not being able to get pregnant after one year or longer of unprotected sex by a couple. Now, because fertility in women is known to decline steadily with age, some providers evaluate and treat women aged 35 years and above quicker than women who are younger. Now, for pregnancy to occur, there are a lot of factors at play that will happen before a woman gets pregnant. First of all, a woman's body must release egg from the ovary for pregnancy to occur. Secondly, a man's sperm must join the egg in the fallopian tube in order to fertilize it. Thirdly, the fertilized egg must go through the fallopian tube down to the uterus where it is going to be implanted. Implant implanting of an, a fertilized egg means that the egg is getting attached to the uterus. That is it. So this is what has to be in place in order for a woman to get pregnant. So if there's a disruption in any of this, then infertility comes to play. We'll now look at common causes of infertility 
as we go along. But for the meantime, I will gladly like to invite Madam Rosling. As you know, she's a mother, she's had children, she's married, and also she's a, she, she's a, a naturopath, a naturopath, that is a naturopath. We all are, is a big word, so along with you, she's going to explain to us because I'm very much interested in how, what naturopathy is all about and how it will help women improve their fertility status. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much, Dr. Dolly. And once again, thank you to Salad Master for, you know, bringing us into yes. a time like this. Yes. In fact, it is really, really very important. But one of the key topics that we are handling in fertility in women, it has caused a lot of problems in marriages. That's you right. must agree. Yes. But now you're asking how, who is a naturopath? Yes, who is a naturopath? Who is a naturopath? Yes. A naturopathy or a naturopath is a system, but an alternative system, okay. you know, based on the theory that diseases can be successfully treated or prevented without the use of drugs. Wow. Without the use of, of drugs, drugs, Dr. Donnie. Yes. And Thank by so the technique of, what is the technique of the control? What is the kind of technique you want to use? It is the technique of diet, okay. exercises, okay. and also massage. Wow. That can help? Yes. Massages can help massages women can with infertility. infertility Beautiful. Your diet and, and exercises. also exercises. Okay. That's nice. So from what I can gather, a naturopath is a person that helps to heal the body through the natural means. Beautiful. No use of drugs, no use, no of, use drug. of medications, nothing invasive, nothing. Except your natural plants. Wow. Okay. So from the little research I did on naturopathy, I also found out that one, it can help the men to optimize their sperm motility. Secondly, it can help with the morphology. Morphology means the shape of a sperm because if anything is wrong with the shape of the sperm, it can't fertilize an egg properly. And then also it helps with the overall count. That is when you see men that has low sperm count. So Madame Rosalind here will have a, a something to tell men who has low sperm count in order to boost it. The kind of food you will eat, the kind of exercises and even massage, like she said, that will help to boost the men's fertility. And then coming to the side of the women, naturopathy also helps with egg health, the quality of eggs produced in the ovaries. The ovary already is, is a storage of eggs, but the, there might be poor quality eggs released from there because of the kind of food you eat. You don't know that it's not good for your eggs and you eat them. But here in this program, proudly sponsored by Salad Masters, we are here to let you know what kind of food to eat, the kind of exercises you need to do in order to get your body ready to mother or father a child. Now, I just go straight to the causes of infertility in women. Number one is I have to, um, I, I divided it into three major parts. Number one is disruption of ovarian function. There's so many things that can disrupt it. That's the first one. The second one is fallopian tube obstruction. If there's anything blocking the fallopian tube or it's swollen, it can also lead to infertility. And the third, but not the least, is um, abnormal uterine contour. So now, from what I have said so far, you know that the major three um, organs in the, a woman's body that enables her to, to be a mother is one, the ovaries, two, the fallopian tube, and three, the uterus. This is, these three things basically makes up the female reproductive system. The, they are the main ones, but they're not the only ones. Now, what can disrupt the ovarian function? A woman's menstrual cycle on the average is usually 28 days, okay? So your, the first day of your menses is defined as the first day of full flow, not the first day it starts by dropping. No, the first day you have a full flow is the first day of your menses. And when this starts, now, averagely, some women have 24 to 32 days cycle in a month and regular. It doesn't have to be... It, 28 days, we, we use 28, but it's an average. It can be from 24 to 32. It's still normal, it's still okay. Now, 
ovulation is it happens on the 20 on the 14th day of, of the woman's uh, menstrual cycle what is ovulation ovulation is just the body releasing egg from the ovaries when an egg is released then the body is ready to 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 mother so if the egg released meets a sperm in the um, reproductive tract once it is fertilized a baby is the next thing so anything that that causes the egg from this ovary not to be released as a, as at the time it should or causes it to be trapped inside the ovary instead of being released is ripened and is trapped there all these things cause infertility and let me not go too much into medical details but let's just start with this number one that can cause the ovary ovarian function to be distorted is what we call polycystic ovarian disease polycystic ovarian disease occurs in women it's usually a common disease we were taught in school that it happens to fat fair um over 40 but these days it comes to women who are even lower and um, whose age brackets fall even below 40. Another one is diminished ovarian reserve. Of course, women are born with eggs that they will ever have. And then the eggs decrease is each month because every month a woman releases an egg and that's what we call ovulation. So over time, as the woman ages, the number of eggs released diminishes and this also diminishes your fertility rates. Another one is a functional hypothalamic um, Functional um, hypothalamic um, function. Naturally, naturally, hypothalamus is, is, is a part of the brain, located in the brain. Now, we call it functional hypothalamic amenorrhea. Amenorrhea is when you're not seeing your menses, which can occur. Maybe you, in your previous pregnancy, you bled too much to the extent that the hypothalamus has to switch itself off. When it gets to this extent, you know that the woman now, you don't bleed every month because the regulator has been turned off. When it is now turned off, the in, invariably, when you don't release egg, you cannot get pregnant. But it can also be, um, when this happens, then you know that you need help in order for you to get pregnant. Now, another one can be improper function of the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands. All these ones, all these organs I'm mentioning, they're located in the brain. It can be a result of brain tumor, so many things that can come into play in order that these two um, organs in the brain start malfunctioning. And when it does, it trickles down to the ovaries, causing the ovary not to release egg as and when do, because it's a very regular function. Anything that disrupts the regularity of the release of the eggs can cause infertility. Another one that can disrupt the ovarian reserve is what we call premature ovarian insufficiency. This is where the woman is young, has eggs in her ovaries, but the ovaries are, uh, the eggs are trapped in the ovaries. They can't come out, which the reasons can be varied. It can be due to stress, anxiety, and all of the, all of nuts. Then another one is menopause. Menopause is age appropriate decline in the ovarian function. It's age appropriate and usually occurs around the age of 50 for, for most women. Now, the third, um, division, the second um, division is a um, fallopian tube. Anything that happens in the fallopian tube that causes it to be blocked will hinder um, getting, a woman getting pregnant because the egg comes out from the ovary and then travels through the fallopian tube into the uterus in order for it to be um, implanted after fertilization has occurred in the fallopian tube. First of all, fallopian tube can be blocked by infection. The common infection we have is PID. Um, some women, especially the younger age group who are exposed to um, sexual activities, one, or infections due to poor hygiene, this also can happen to those women. And what it does is that it goes to the fallopian tube and gets it swollen. And once it is swollen, the cavity gets smaller and invariably it might even lead to total blockage of the fallopian tube, which means even if the egg is released down from the ovaries, it can pass through the fallopian cavity and then the sperm coming from the vagina through the um, cervix and then the uterus cannot even pass through to go and meet the egg in the fallopian tube. So without fertilization, then there will be no pregnancy. The second one is, um, the second one is what we call um, gonorrhea. It falls under this um, um, disease stuff. 
And then what we also call endometriosis. Endometriosis can also affect the fallopian tube, causing it to be blocked. Now, another one is abdominal uterine counter. The uterus has a, a pear-shaped um, shape. That is the way nature made it, in order for it to be able to carry a child. Now, so many things can distort, uh, distort the, um, the uterus, the shape and the contour, namely something like um, fibroid, which is mainly predominant in our society, is basically a black woman disease. Fibroid occurs in women a lot. And then um, we have also what we call, um, maybe you've had something like surgeries in the past, so many of it that can distort the uterus, or some even are born with abnormal uterus, depending on whichever one. So now, madam, I come to you once again. Now, from what I know, as a, a, a practicing a medical um, person in this country, I've seen a whole lot of black women come down with fibroid. Is there anything that naturopathists can give us in order to reduce the incidence of fibroid in black women? Uh, basically, you know, what the natural party does is to see how, how as much as possible we can get into nature okay. instead of drugs yes. so that you can address any kind of disease. disease. Really and truly, what is disease? Disease is the accumulation of unwanted toxic toxic substances. Or substances in the body okay. you know, and then contaminated blood. Yes. This is what basically is disease. Yeah. So, and over time, when we are not eating rightly, yeah. because when you eat right, when you have right diet, yes. when you do exercise, as I said before, when you do exercises, yes. when you do massage, all yes. of these things, they are natural. They're yes. not drugs. And so they will help, you know. So for fibroid, for example, yes. you can discover that it's accumulated of some mass in the, in the body. Uterus, I yes. think you should just go a bit and give us further explanation of what the fiber really is. So we can address it from the food aspect or the diet aspect, aspect of, it. of it. Because you see, when we take in, as I said earlier, what causes disease? Yes. It's the accumulation of unwanted, um, unwanted toxic substance in the body. Yes. And remember also too, when you stuff your body with the free radicals, yes. you know, the free radicals, when you stuff your body with them, like what we get from our fried food, for example. Yes. What we get from oil, for example. Yes. You know, they go to accumulate in different parts of the body. And if they're not expelled, when they should be expelled, they go and cause different issues in the body. Mm -hmm. So please don't give us further explanation, you know, explanation on what fiber, fiber really is. is. Because okay. this is a mass of, I believe, you give on you a yes, I'll do that. But I'll tell you what your food can do. Okay. to eliminate such things out of our body. Okay. So, well, fibroid, fibroid is a whole lot of topic. And I think that we will dedicate a program for fibroid alone. Mm -hmm. But let's just have an overview of what fibroid is all about. Fibroid is a mass located usually inside the womb or around it. And it is basically um, consists of fibrous tissues. Fibroid is not cancerous is a mass, which cancer can also be cancerous, but fibroid, it is non-malignant mass located usually inside the womb. And one of the causes, or we don't know what actually causes it, but we have risk factors. Number one risk factor for fibroid is, first of all, is familial. If any of your relatives, mother, or auntie, grandmother has fibroid, you are likely going to have fibroid. That's one of the risk factors. Another one is age. When you are maybe like, it's the older you get, the more you see fibroid in a woman's endometrius. Another one is what we call nulliparity. Nulliparity means that you have not given birth before and the lady is matured. I don't know whether the womb will like, okay, I'm not carrying baby, I have to carry something. So it goes on to, this fibroid goes on to form. And then it has the propensity of, even if when you remove it surgically, it grows back. I've seen so many people who have come for repeat myomectomy. So, and myomectomy, myomectomy is the removal of fibroid surgically. Now, if we can get the kind of food that will stop 
fibroid or lessen fibroid in our society, I believe um, the society will be a better place because usually this is more of a disease of a black woman, more disease of a black woman. It is nothing cancerous, but some fibroids, if you leave them, it, it tends to turn can cancerous later in life. But basically, it's a non-malignant mass found in the uterus and mainly consists of fibrous tissues. So that is what it is. If you cut open a fibroid, you see it, it's white in color. It's usually walled off. When you open it up in surgery, you see the, it comes, it can be located in, the womb has three layers, inside the womb, the muscle mass, and then the outside the womb. Some of it, the one located inside the muscle mass where the baby implants, the, 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 the womb bed, it is the one that anyone that has it, one of the symptoms you will keep having is excessive bleeding. During your normal menses, you will bleed more than normal. The average amount of blood a woman is supposed to bleed during menses is 80 mils. But in this case, you find that a woman who has fibroid on the bed of the womb, that is, we call it um, submucous fibroid, the woman will bleed close, maybe to even 200 mils. Uh, and then that woman will continually be anemic mm. all the time. So this is one of the things. Then the other one is, um, the one that is in the muscle, you have some fibroids embedded in the muscle of the womb. When this happens, this one is really not a problem, but it can give you precious symptoms. But the one that is a very bad thing for fertility is um, the one that comes to the endothelium. That's where the baby implants and comes to stay. So physically, it's blocking the baby from implanting. So that is one of the reasons why fibroid can give you infertility. Yes. So now we are looking at the kind of food that will give us um, fibroid stuff, which will tell us later in this show. Yeah. Yes. But for now, fibroid is one of the major um, causes, especially in black women, that will decrease um, fertility rates. Then what's, what I want to look at now is what increases the risk of a woman's infertility. Every woman when you are giving birth to, you are created with an ovary, fallopian tubes. Uh, no, we are created with two ovaries, two fallopian tubes and one womb, or the yes, and one womb, ready to be a mother. Now, along the course of life, some things might happen that will decrease the rate of this fertility. Let's look at them. Number one is what? Age. Women in their attack, late 30s and 40s have it have a harder time conceiving than women who are younger. And it is said that the peak reproductive age for a woman is 28 years old. That is the peak of our reproductive age. So anything from 29, 30, the woman is already declining. Not that she can't get pregnant, she can, but the rate at which she will conceive has started declining gradually. And it's a gradual process. It's just not, it doesn't happen all at once. Another one is, now, how does aging actually affect a woman's fertility? First of all, when a woman gets older, the number of eggs in her ovaries reduces. We are born with over 7 million eggs in one ovary. So we can have like 14 million um, eggs in the two of, of the ovaries. Each month, about 30 eggs from each ovary is being recruited and only one will grow to maturity. So you can imagine 30 from here, 30 from here, like 60 eggs every month is being depleted from when the woman enters into adolescence to the time she enters menopause. So you can see there's a, there's a great amount of wastage, egg, egg wastage. So from that 7 million, by the time the woman is getting to 30, it's gradually reducing. Another one is the eggs, now contained in the ovaries might not be very healthy because the eggs a woman has, has been inside the woman even in utero. In utero means when the woman, the girl child is in the womb, the ovaries are already there and the number of eggs she will need all her life is already in the ovaries. So by the time the baby is born, she's one year today. If a woman is one year, your ovaries age is maybe one year, nine months. Yes, so that's what happens. That's how age decreases fertility in women. Another one is that she might have developed maybe other conditions 
by the time she's hitting 40, she might have diabetes, hypertension, uh, or she might be obese. All these things further decreases the um, pregnancy potential of a woman. Another one is lifestyle. People who go and drink, binge drink on alcohol, who smoke cigarettes, or that's tobacco, all of those things. And then the kind of food you eat, like Madame Roslyn said, people who eat so much fried food, junk food, soda drinks, sugary drinks, these things that are not healthy. Invariably, when it gets into the body, it is metabolized. And then the end product gives you excessive radicals that are there destroying things inside the body and invariably accumulate over the years and cause diseases, like you said. And then the other one is, as a woman gets older, the potential for her to miscarry pregnancy increases. Those are it. Then another one is weight gain or weight loss. Excessive weight gain is not good for fertility. Now, excessive weight loss is still not good for fertility because there's a, a way, a body size a woman must attain before the hypothalamus can, can regulate the ovaries to start um, releasing eggs. If the body sees it that you are too slim, the body spends, expands all, all its energy in trying to conserve energy for itself instead of doing um, functions like release of eggs and everything. So a, woman needs, a woman's weight needs to be optimal in order for her to attain pregnancy. So this is all now I can say for now. So I'll give Madame Rosemary now to give us an insight on a woman, the kind of lifestyle that a woman who is trying to conceive should avoid. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Dolly. Okay, Once again, thank you, Salad Master, for this great opportunity. That's right. I will say all you have said right now is things that cause infertility in women. Yes. You talked about the age. Yes, ma'am. You talked about the lifestyle. Yes. You talked about the STDs. Yes. And then you also talked about many, many other different factors. Yes. But see, every of the, every, all the things I've just mentioned now, yes. you cannot detach them from food. You cannot detach them from right. In, in naturopathy, yes. there is no kind of sickness Mm. or disease in the body that cannot be treated with our normal food. Wow. Because all our food, your beans, your yam, your rice, your vegetables, they are all packed with loads of vitamins and minerals. Yes. And this is the vitamins and minerals that our body is looking for. Yes. This is what we call the vital force in natural party. Wow, vital force. Yeah, the vital force. Wow. You know, so, and then your lifestyle, the kind of diet you eat, yes. the kind of food you eat can determine how high the vital force would be or how low it will be. Then okay. that also, when you, when you also exercise, yes. you also determine how active your body will be. But see, basically your eating habit, your eating habit might affect fertility. Yes. Yes. Okay. Your, your eating habit might affect fertility. So we need to be cautious Women, we need to be cautious about that. And again, in naturopathy, yes. you will discover that there is no kind of sickness or disease in the body that fasting, you may be surprised, that fasting cannot address. Wow. Yes. yes. Fasting. Yes, fasting. Okay. Fasting can address almost every kind of disease because you are not starving the body, but you are starving the the, 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 disease. Uh, the disease itself. So okay. you stab it out of your body. Okay. So you can go on like a total fast. When I mean total fast. Yes. No food at all. For how long? For like maybe like three days. Or wow. one week. Yes, one week. But no is food. the person allowed to take water? Yes, that you'll be taking water. Okay. And so the water begins to cleanse, you know, and detoxes the system. Okay. And so you can do that. When I mean no food, I mean as in no food at all, just okay. water. Wow. And then you only take water when you feel a bit tasty. Anytime you, have, anytime you feel tasty, you, you take, take water. water. Okay. So there is really, really and truly, if we load our bodies with antioxidants. Yes. You see, when God made the, the vegetables, the food, the yam, you know, they were all, they all come in the natural state, load with antioxidants. Okay. You know, but in the process of cooking, 
in the process of what we cook our food with, yeah. you know, we now contaminate the food. That's right. And one, as I said earlier, what is disease? You know, whether it is fibroid, whether it is cancer, whether it is diabetes, whether it is hypertension, hypertension all of it is accumulation of unwanted, you know, substances, substances in the body. In the body. So okay. once we can do this, true, one, of, one of the methods is true fasting. Okay. You know, so when you fast, you detox and you take away all of the... Okay, fine. The so I want to still ask anything. you on this fasting. Now, assuming that a woman of 35 years old, married for maybe three years and has been having problems conceiving, now wants to embark on her fertility journey right now after listening to this program. Now, how does fasting help her? And when should she start it? Is it now that she wants to embark on the fertility program or or during the fertility treatment? Basically, it's, yes. it's a lifestyle. Okay. So you, you see, you don't just jump into it just because I'm, I'm treating. I Again, want to get like pregnant. What, you know what you, uh, the doctors do? Okay. You, we, in natural party, we treat holistically. You know, okay. you don't just take one part, so this headache, let us look at it. Okay. You take, you take holistically. The whole the person. Whole, yeah, the whole person. Wow. You know, so, and this is true, you know, food. Yes. This is true, osteopathy yes you know, and then this was still um, um aromatherapy wow you know, so these are all different you know forms of a uh, study in natural party yeah you know, so and then so um when you don't say because i am i'm i'm um it's a lifestyle okay you don't say I, because I, I want to now right, start to be pregnant right from right from even the beginning right from when you are conscious to be a girl okay or a human being okay you must learn to eat right right you understand? So you don't just wait until it's okay because I want to address this particular issue. Let me begin to go and do the fasting. So it, I mean, it's like it's a continuous thing. Yes. Okay, but I'm, I'm now trying to speak from the general public. Now, yeah. what if people who are not, who have not seen this program before now and they have been eating as they like, not knowing the consequences of that to their health. Now, if such a woman is listening to this program and she now wants to start eating right, because she wants to maybe conceive next year. Is, is now too late? No, 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 it's not too late. Okay. It's not too late. Okay, it's not too late to start yeah. eating right. It's not too late to start okay. eating right. So now the, the first thing she needs to do is to detox to by detox. doing fasting. Yes, to detox okay. by doing fasting. Now, is three days the most she can do or can she take it beyond that if she pleases? Well, you can take it up to like when your body, when you feel that your, your body, body can you, take you, but your body anymore. tells you because nature is so, God is so, is so gracious. Yes. You know, so your, when your body tells you that you can't take it anymore, you then you know. eat. Yes. Okay. And then of course, when you now begin to break the fast, you don't just jump into taking food, you know, solid food. Yes. You know, we, 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 we have, um, a diet plan, you know, so yes. you could, you could, you could you, see when you have issues with um, infertility, you yes. must do consultation, That's consultation right. with your dietitian, yes. consultation with your, your nutritionist. Oh, yeah, your nutritionist, fantastic. Your, yes, your doctor, okay, and then your dietitian. Beautiful. You know, so Beautiful. all of this will will help. And the reason why we, the National Party, we try to run away from from modern medicine. Yeah, because we know that Why? every medicine have the side effect. Effects, Most times you are treating one, you are treating one issue, and you are developing, you are developing another. another issue. Wow! And so, but with 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 your food, yes, with your plants, yes, you know there is no side effect. Side. There are really them. really no side effect. Wow! Wow! Mm. That's an eye opener for me. Mm. Me, I am a doctor, but that is not that doesn't negate the the the. the truths in what she said every medicine has its own side effects of course we know that food when eaten right can never have a side effect when we eat it right now another thing i want to ask is that you have been saying food um food that doesn't cause them um, excessive free radicals in the system what are those kind of foods for some of our viewers who are curious to know and to really want to improve their diet what is it that they shouldn't take? Like right now, someone, like for breakfast, a typical breakfast for a normal Nigerian is um, tea, bread, butter, jam, egg, and all. So what is it in this typical breakfast that we do? Or maybe we do pap and um, akara. Or sometimes you can do fried yam and eggs, or egg and yam, or plantain, whatever case may be. So what is it that we need to inject into this breakfast to make it more wholesome? 
to take care of the whole body in order for a woman or a man, for that matter, who wants to conceive, to place themselves in. Simply put, just to load your body with fruits and vegetables. Fruits and with vegetables. Lots of fruits and vegetables. Okay. Lots of fruit with fiber. Wow. You know, because as I, I was discussing earlier today with somebody, and I said, when your house is dirty, yes. I mean, what do you do? You clean it up. What do you use to clean it up? Maybe you use your broom. That's right. You use your hoover or you use your mop. Yes. So that's the same thing that your salad does to you. Wow. You know, because your salad, you combine your salad with different um, fruits and vegetables. You have potassium, you have calcium, you have aluminium, you have zinc, you have all of it in your body. Yeah. And so what, what, what the salad does is that it, cleans, it cleanses the body. Okay. You know, so really and truly, with every meal, as yes. much as possible, yes. load your body with food. uncooked food, as much as possible, uncooked, especially in the morning. Wow. Like your breakfast yes. should be made of uncooked food. Okay. And then, but you, because, and you know, see, that's why, thank you, Salad Master. Wow. You know, for this a healthy cooking system. That's right. You know, when you use the Salad Master healthy cooking system, it makes you eat your food in near natural state. Yes. You understand? Like 93, up to 93, 96% of the vitamins and nutrients we the body need to function. Forget about what the issue is. If it's infertility, if it's cancer, if it's diabetic, it's all of this, they are all in your food. That's right. So with the healthy cooking system, the salad master, you are taking your food as your medicine. Your medicine. That's and right. And you will near raw state. I, my recommendation is, is if as much as possible, eat your food raw. But we can't be eating raw food all, all the, the time. time because we're already used to eating cooked food. Yes. Dr. Dolly, do you even know something amazing? What? God himself has already ripened all the food for us. Wow. Yes. Let's look at the plantain, for example. Okay. It goes ripe on its own and ready to eat. That's right. Look at your mangoes. Oh, yeah. Look at your... So God himself has already cooked Prepared the food. For I mean, cooked the food for us. <laughs> so the more you now cook the food, you are killing, killing the vital, I keep going back to that word. If you are killing the vital force. So if you ask me as much as possible for people that are looking to get their body ready for, ready for pregnancy, pregnancy yes. particularly women, stay away from one thing, red meat. Did you hear that? Let's retreate that for our viewers. Yes. You, we need to allow this one. Yes. Stay away, Stay away from, from red meat, meat and fried food. food. Fried food. They diminish the, your, they diminish your body. They diminish the, 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 the I mean, your system okay. as much as possible because they load the body with free radicals. Okay. You know, and so as much as possible, stay away from red meat. Stay away from fried foods. Okay. You know because it will affect the eggs. Egg production and an egg pollution. Wow. It affects egg production and ovulation. ovulation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I hope we got that. Fried food and red meat affects the air quality and ovulation. I am a doctor, but I'm also learning because I didn't read natural fat in school. So that's why mm -hmm. she's an, a valued guest on our program today, so that you can hear from the horse's mouth. If you want the air quality to be at its peak while on your, your way to getting pregnant. Please avoid red meat and fried food. Now, another one I want to talk about is, um, is um, on the fruits on. Is it every kind of food, fruit that is good or are there some fruits that should be avoided? Well, every kind of food is good, but you know, there are some foods that we say they have the high glycemic index. That's right. And that is like the, the okay. sugar in it, yes. you know. So okay, so for those who, who has um, diabetes, yes, they should so avoid, they should avoid things with food with high glycemic, like your like your like your um like your sugar cane. Oh yeah, like your, like your, your banana is overripe. Okay. Like um, um then even your um Quite a, quite a number of them. Quite so a food of them. with high glycemic index, we should ask because we're talking about foods now. Yes. You know, all foods are good, foods are good, but yes. they're not, you know, too much sweets. Foods yes. are not really yes. good. Okay, Especially you can compare them to like your natural sugar. Okay. I mean, it's still better, better than, than your, yes, your processed uh, sugar. Story, your processed, processed sugar. Your, sorry, your processed sugar. Okay. So um, reduce as much as possible. Take foods, but the ones with high glycemic index, 
yes. reduce you know reduce it further yeah okay now another thing also that i'm very much interested in is um you talked about fruits and you talked about vegetables salad and all how about seeds wonderful grains yes. grains yes, are grain. very yes. grains are very very important you need grains okay and then plant protein okay you know, like your legumes oh soybeans you know, soya beans your brown mushroom. beans but even then for for soya beans okay. the men the men need to be you know, slow down on it okay you know, our male like yes, carry slow, slow down on soya on beans, soy beans. Okay. slow down on soya beans okay and they should also slow down on oyster Oh yes, yes oyster. Okay. oyster. Those are yes, the fresh yes, um, yes. seafood, seafood that, yes, we enjoy. that we enjoy. Oh okay, really? Go slow down because it has a way of affecting, you know, the male reproductive, reproductive system. system. Yes. Okay. But well, load your food with green herbs. Wow, this is the first time I'm hearing that. Yes. Oh yes, that oyster for yes. men for men should be reduced. Should be reduced. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. This is a very um, insightful, insightful show today. I'm also getting a lot. I have a whole lot to take back to my patients when I resume work. So, 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 so insightful. We're happy to have you here, madam. Thank you. And we are very happy for Salad Masters for providing the perfect cookware in which when you get those food items that we're talking about, you now cook it in the near natural state. So that is very important because some of the um, cookwares that we have, we have cookwares that contain lead, aluminum, metals, iron, that actually when it gets to the body, instead of um, serving you with the full nutrition you were looking for, it adds to the problem yeah. that's already existing. So thank you, Ma. So now I'll go further to how do we treat? So many women have this problem, but they don't know where to turn to, they don't know where to go, they don't know how to do it. First of all, like we said, first of all, look at your diet. Make it a lifestyle. Try to eat healthy. Reduce the red meats. Reduce the fried food. Add more of vegetables. Add more of fruits. And, and also, grains. and grains. And then, if you have to go for um, proteins, add more of plant proteins. Those are very good, like your beans. Everybody knows plant proteins. They are there for you to um, purchase. Another one thing I, I'd like to ask you before I now go to how do you treat infertility is, what about eggs? What's your take on egg? Is that a good source of protein for people to, because I heard some people say um, egg contains cholesterol, run away from it, do this. What's your take on that? For me, if I want to talk as a, as a naturopathy, I yes. will run away from anything animal. Wow. Animals, I, I tell my wife, I'm not an, I'm not an animal eater. Okay. You know? so, so I'm not as possible if we can. See, do you know that? Yeah. What we are looking for, yeah. the, 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 the goats, the, 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 the cows, yes. what do they eat? They eat grass. What do they eat? Grass. You know? Yeah. They eat grass. You know, and these are low with. So Vitamins. for me, really, as much as possible, well, all, everyone can become a, a vegan. Vegans or a vegetarians. But yeah. If we can stick to plant based diet. diet Maybe they have a, by maybe eighty percent of our diet. Yes, eighty percent. A lot of issues that we have. Okay. As I keep going back, there is no kind of disease yes. in the body yes. that fasting cannot deal with. Yes, wow, I'm telling you the truth. So fasting, yes. as we know, yes, is, is also called so, natural natural exactly. Okay. You know. Natural detoxify, detoxify <laughs> all the toxins in the <laughs> body, body. Remove it. That's what fasting, yeah, fasting does. does. Yes. So um, the, 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 what, what we need to do is um, go back again to nature. That is where wow. the answer is. I like that a lot. Going back to nature, going back to the basics. Now, for people who have infertility or you have been married for one year and been having regular unprotected sex with your spouse and you're yet to conceive and you desire to conceive. Now, first thing you need to do is one, that you need to know the factors that are contributing to infertility. First and foremost, you look at your age as a lady, mm -hmm. even as a man. Then you look at the kind of job your husband does because there are some kind of jobs that are not good for sperm production, especially men who are long distance drivers. It has been said and been 
researched and documented that long distance driving increases the temperature around the, um, what is it called? Around the um, sperm production site, which is the testis. Once that testis is located outside the body for a reason. The reason being that testis requires lower temperature than the body for it to optimally produce sperms. So anything that a man does that increases the temperature of these testes invariably results in affecting the sperm. Now, again, for men who are in the house and when they're in the house, they always wear um, cotton and um, boxer shorts. It is discouraged. For men also who like sauna baths and hot tub baths, it is discouraged for men. It is not good for men. It decreases um, it increases the um, temperature, temperature around of them. around the testes, so it's not encouraged. And then for males whose lifestyle involves excessive drinking of alcohol, this needs to stop because he has alcohol has direct harmful effects on sperms. Another one is cigarette smoking. It also affects fertility, and once this is if this is the norm, even before you visit a doctor, even before you visit a naturopath, even before you visit a dietitian to plan diet for you, this kind of lifestyle, you need to put them in check. You need to resolve, I, I need to, I want to have children, I need to stop smoking cigarettes. Some people will often ask you, I have some neighbors, I have some friends, they've been smoking forever and they have children. Mm -hmm. You never know how your own body is going to respond to the same chemicals. So the best thing is to run away from it. Another one also is when one of the partners are obese, you look at your body size and know what is good for you. Then if you're obese and you are not um, pregnant yet, maybe it's time to cut down. Maybe it's time to cut down because- and That is where we talked about exercise. Yes, yeah, that's where we talked about exercise. Exercise comes to play. Now, before even exercise comes to play, what you eat, makes the bulk of yes because we talked about obesity on our last program and we saw that the main thing that adds to your weight is basically the food yes basically the food and then exercises and then also like um then if you're also planning for a family you need to start looking at the massages well talking about infertility in ways that are not invasive. Treatment of infertility with non-invasive and near natural means of conceiving. Now, if you have tried all these paths, and if you, you can even go a step ahead and go and meet your medical doctor, or fertility experts, your obst obst obstetrician and gynecologist consultant, when you start um, consulting them, you see that what he will tell you is not so different from what we have told you here. Yes. Because everything we have talked about here is the holistic well-being of the individual, of the body, of your billion dollar body. For the body to carry a pregnancy, the body has to be in an optimal state of health. Another one is also the age of the woman. The age, pa patients need to be truthful because some men actually don't know how old their wives are. The wife will be telling you I'm 25, meanwhile she's getting close to 40. And you are there trying. Women know, know it. When you know that your age is declining, don't put too much pressure on yourself or your spouse. Be truthful. I am, this is the age it is. And then with advanced age, that now changes the dynamics of your management and treatment. You can even now go for IVF. It is allowed for those people whose faiths allow IVF. You can do IVF. IVF has helped a lot of women and to have children in their home. Another one also and is- Dr. Johnny, you just made a very vital point. Okay. You know, we have a way of saying, I am praying, I'm believing, I'm yeah. facing. I'm, you need to, that's why you said, if it does work, I mean, so you need to address the issue before they get out of hand. That is you know, Like she has just rightly said, if you know that you're already age, you know, you don't- Yes, once, you once you're 35 once and you then you, and you are not getting pregnant, you need to be, you can't be sitting at home, you can't be sitting on the couch watching TV. No, you need to get up. Yes. You need to start fast because whether you like it or not, the ovarian reserve declines with age. The number of eggs in that ovary is decreasing. So the earlier you do something about it, the better. Another one is now, if you have checked your lifestyle, checked your diet, 
and checks everything and is okay. The next step for you now is to go to a doctor. I have been trying to conceive for so so number of years. I've been married. My partner and I, we are willing to have children, but it's not forthcoming. What do I need to do? Now, the doctor will start by collecting a medical and sexual history from both partners. Because why I emphasize on both partners, what we see in the hospital is that most of the time, the male don't come to hospital. They say it is the female's problem. No, it is problem of both parties. And some of the, some of, uh, most of the time too, you find out that none of them, they, they don't have any problem. Both of them are okay. So now it needs for you to work out a plan on how to circumvent that problem with your physician. And both of you need to be involved. Now, the initial evaluation usually includes the semen analysis of the man. Semen analysis involves the man producing his, the sperm and the sperm now goes under the microscope. We see what is going on. That is where we look at the number. That is where you have some men, you have them some high low sperm count. If you have low sperm count, we will know what is causing your low sperm count. Is it that you are smoking too much? Is it that you're drinking too much? Is it that your lifestyle is completely detrimental to the survival of sperm cells in your body? We need to look at that. Or do you have a local problem? Some men also have so many problems in, 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 in their testes. Some men, you have what we call varicocele. They have large, big, big veins on the sperm. And these veins, once there's a vein there, vein has blood in it. And with blood comes heat that will increase the temperature of these testes. So that is all the things that your doctor will look at and know where the problem is coming from. But before you know where the problem is coming from, you need to know that you have the problem. So that is it. The men's um, sperm analysis has to be done. Also, apart from the count, you also look at the shape of the sperm cells. Are they normal? Are they short? Are they long? Are they tall? What is the problem? Do they come with tails or without head? All these things have um, an effect also on the productivity level of a partners. Another one also is, um, after talking about um, morphology of the sperm, we can uh, talk about um, then morphology counts and then motility, the way it moves. For a sperm to fertilize an egg, it needs to move upwards. The movement has to be upward and fast. So for some sperm cells, you look at, at it under the microscope, instead of them going upwards, they're going sideways. Or some of them will just stay one place and just be shaking their body, shaking. They're not moving, they're just shaking. That kind of sperm already has a problem or, um, um, in, fertilization, in fertilizing an egg. So if you have this kind of problem, it's not the end of the road. There are so many things that can be done for this sperm also to resume its normal function. And then this is for the man. Preliminary in, in fertility investigation test for the man is in semen analysis. For the woman is what we call Tubal evaluation, where is your tubes? Your tubes are your fallopian tubes. They are the conduits or the passage in which the egg passes to get to the sperm and then gets inside the uterus for um, implantation. So now we evaluate the tubes and there are so many ways in which we can do it. Um, we use them um, ultra um, rays, like ultrasound rays, scans to look at it and see. So it's quite invasive and for some women it's quite painful but we need to look at the state of the fallopian tubes. And some cases also, we do what we call hysteroscopy to look at the womb of the woman to see if there are um, stuff that is in the womb that is making conception difficult, maybe like fibroid, maybe like a tear, anything in the womb. Once you do hysteroscopy, you can pick it out and then you know how to solve the problem. And another one is then, then hormonal assay for both the male and the female. Yeah. You test your hormones. For the males, their hormones are usually the testosterone and, and not. Some men might have normal or suboptimal level of testosterone, depending whatever causes it, it can also be addressed. For the females, the female hormones that we have, first of all, the estrogen, the follicle stimulating hormone, and the prolactin and everything. There are so many causes of infertility. The, the one we have um, increased um, Hormone called prolactin is that a woman who is not giving, you have not given birth and you don't have a baby, you're nursing, but your breast milk, your breast discharges milk like you're nursing. Yes, it's a problem. And when a woman has that kind of um, problem, you need to go and see your gynecologist to put it right. And, and it can also be an indication that your brain, there's a cancer somewhere.
not all the time, but this is one of the causes. That is it. So this is it. And then depending on the problem, when you now do all this investigation by both partners and then the results are brought to you to the doctor, both partners need to sit with the doctor and then the doctor looks at it and, and figures out where the problem lies. And now is when you now see where the problem lies that you can now have so many options for fertility. Number one is that you can go for treatment, which will revert whatever it is that has gone wrong. If it's irreversible, you can go for women who are maybe past the, um, your ovaries are, maybe you're in your 40s and maybe there are no eggs, they are the eggs in the ovaries are so minute that it cannot even come out. And when you have those kind of eggs, they have reduced qualities, you can go for um, in vitro fertilization, which is IVF. They have helped a lot of mothers. We, in IVF, they do so many things like egg donation, even some women who are sick, or maybe you have a very big fibroid and you're afraid of removing it and you can't carry a child. We have surrogate mothers also who carry a child for the mother. And the last but not the least is that when you've tried every op option and it has failed, there's always adoption. Yeah, there's always adoption. There are so many children in the world looking for home. So that is it. So um, um, I think um, today that we are coming to the end of this particular show. So is there any word that you will still tell them, any kind of piece of advice that you will give the potential mothers and fathers that are watching today's program? The thing is, um, eat right, okay? Have a healthy lifestyle. Okay. Do your exercises. That is the third point. You know, so with all of these things, get as close to nature as possible. As possible. And of course, Pray. Oh, yes, That's you pray. Point, pray. Yes, yes, yes. So that is the wonderful advice that um, mm -hmm. Madame Rosalind has given us. She's a naturopathist. And, and here, I'm standing as a medical doctor, and I'm here to tell you that nothing she has said here is against medical practice. Nothing. If nothing, it's, it's going to boost because any patient who is coming to the hospital and you're already observing all these things she said, when you come to your doctor, you're already a fantastic patient. That's a very fertile ground to start any form of treatment. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a fertile ground. So we're taking it back to Mr. Marvel. There is something I also didn't add. Okay. Number one thing, another thing again is that, you know, our bodies need to be alkalinized. Okay. When your body is, is high in that state of alkalinity, let me put it that way. That's right. No matter if a no matter no disease can try. Remember what Otto Weber says. Yes. If it's even even cancer. Yes. And that's... most other diseases, and most other issues in our body cannot thrive in a body that is optimally alkalinized. Yes, you know? because and that is one of the things. Again, I would say that the salad master cooking healthy cooking system is doing every food you cook in the salad master titanium three one six. Meta is alkaline from your water to every single food you put. So every time you are eating from the salad master a healthy cooking system, wow, you are already your body is already ready to fight any kind of disease, disease or and yeah. your body is highly immunized. Wow, that's okay. nice. Because to buttress that point, we know that uh, most of the diseases we have, both is cancer, both um so many other diseases. The underlying factor medically is what we call inflammation. And inflammation usually takes place in acidic environments. So now, if you now remove the acidity and put alkaline, so most of the diseases won't have a fertile ground to germinate from. So from here, we're taking it back to Mr. Marvel. Mr. Marvel, do we have any questions from you? Okay. I just want to show you if you can Hello, Mr. Marvel. We can hear you. Can you hear me now? We can, can hear you, you but you're breaking on. Thank you very much. Uh, I must say that it's been fantastic. Thank you, Madam Mosley. Those information I gave up today was really, really helpful. We have okay. two questions, uh, Dr. Tori and Mr. Uh, Mosley. We have two questions. The first one someone is asking, what if I had a baby before? Yeah, what, what, 
possible to become asexual after having a baby before? Okay. Okay, she had a baby before. All right. Hello, Marvel. He's like lost him. He's like lost you, Marvel. Hello. Okay. So now tomorrow. Tomorrow. tomorrow, tomorrow yes, we have. We are continuing the infertility tomorrow in men. So whatever the questions they have is still infertility. We are dealing with yeah. both sexes. So we will now pile it up tomorrow. We will conclusively address, address the questions. Hello? Okay, so we lost him. So, mom, <laughs> thank you for thank you so coming much. to grace this, um, this uh, wonderful show today. Uh, we are very happy to have you as our um, special guest because this is actually what people need. If you can get holistically healthy, uh, there's nothing you cannot achieve. Anybody, a healthy man and a healthy woman, when they come together, when they consistently try and pray, I believe they, they will be able to conceive. Yeah. So thank you, Ma, for the lot of insights that you gave us today. Thank and you. also we are extending our very big thank you to our proud sponsors, Salad Masters, who are the people who made this program to come to you today. And then on behalf of myself, Dr. Dolly, I'm saying thank you and goodbye. We can't wait to see you in another program, in another segment of this program tomorrow.